Thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Yum China Second Quarter 2024 Earnings Conference Call. All participants are in a listen-only mode. There will be a presentation followed by a question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, you will need to press the star key followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Florence Lipp. Please go ahead. Thank you, operator. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Yum China's second quarter 2024 earnings conference call. On today's call are our CEO, Ms. Joey Watt, and our CFO, Mr. Andy Young. I'd like to remind everyone that our earnings call and investor materials contain forward-looking statements, which are subject to future events and uncertainties. Actual results may differ materially from these forward-looking statements. All forward-looking statements should be considered in conjunction with the cautionary statement in our earnings release and the risk factors included in our filings with the SEC. This call also includes certain non-GAAP financial measures. You should carefully consider the comparable GAAP measures. Reconciliation of non-GAAP and GAAP measures is included in our earnings release. You can find a webcast of this call and a PowerPoint presentation on our IL website. Please note that during today's call, all year-over-year growth results exclude the impact of foreign currency, unless otherwise noted. Now, I would like to turn the call over to Joey Watt, CEO of Yum China. Joey? Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today, Yum China reported record levels of revenue, operating profit, and EPS for the second quarter. System sales grew 4%, on top of 32% growth in the same period last year. Core operating profit grew 12% to 275 million US dollars. EPS increased 19%. I would like to thank our colleagues for their hard work and innovative spirit. We are navigating a complex and dynamic environment but we see the many challenges more as opportunities. With our industry-leading capabilities and our scale, we are turning these situations to our competitive advantage. We have taken aggressive steps to drive revenue and profitability. I would like to highlight three of them. First, we took a fresh look at every key process and cost elements in our businesses. We make countless innovations to improve our operational efficiency, enhance profitability, and increase resiliency. We are already seeing results. We are achieving major cost savings and reinvesting them into food and value. Second, we broadened our addressable market and held market share with our sharp focus on value for money and innovative products. Our transactions and delivery sales both grew by double digits in the second quarter. We will continue to innovate across our menu to address customer needs. Third, our breakthrough business models, K Coffee and Pizza Hut Wow achieved encouraging initial results. These stores delivered incremental simple sales and incremental profit. They are showing great future potential. These strategies are working well. Q2 was our most profitable second quarter since our spin-off. Restaurant margin stabilized, OP margin expanded to 9.9%. Let me first talk about our initiatives to drive operational efficiency. These initiatives cover all aspects of our organization. First, Project Fresh Eye, launched in quarter four last year, helped improve OP margins this quarter. We are shooting for best in class and best in cost. We are assessing our operations from our RGM, in other words, store managers, point of view, 
supporting our RGM better and faster. From our restaurants to back offices, we are reducing complexity and simplifying operations. All our major initiatives are now in place. The result is fewer unnecessary process burdens on our RGMs and better efficiency. Separately, we launched Project Red Eye at the end of quarter one to improve our surprising efficiency. Our goal is to spend better and buy better. To spend better, we are assessing our operations from our customer's point of view, identifying areas that add no value for them. We are also simplifying our ingredient SKUs, packaging, and menu in a certain segment of stores and select day parts without compromising sales. To buy better, we are sourcing directly from farmers and producers for certain categories. By systematically examining our operations from fresh perspectives, we are uncovering numerous opportunities. We are doing all of this while ensuring food safety and quality. Lastly, AI and automation will continue to play a big role in our business. We have automated major restaurant management tasks, from sales forecasting to labor scheduling and inventory management. We have rolled out iKitchen to all Pizza Hut stores. This integrated AI system enhances food quality and improves operational efficiency. We were among the first in our industry in China to adopt generative AI in 2023 to turbocharge our back office processes. We are working on a few dozen generated AI applications, including consumer insights, customer support, food safety, and new product innovation. These tools are already helping us improve efficiency and make more informed, data-driven decisions. We are making great progress with these measures. Some have already impacted our second quarter results, while others will take more time to bear fruit. Importantly, these are structural improvements that will bring long-lasting benefits. With these measures in place, we have the bullet to compete on value and pursue growth in this dynamic environment. With that, let me turn to our brand strategy, starting with KFC. In our 37 years in China, KFC has introduced many popular product categories. Recent innovations include our juicy beef burgers and whole chicken. Customers appreciate these new products, but they also love the fresh energy we bring to our iconic classics. In May, we combined our original recipe chicken and mashed potatoes to create a brand new burger, the original recipe chicken burger, Yuan Wei Ji Han Bao. By the way, the classic way to enjoy KFC's original recipe chicken is with mashed potatoes, at least for kids in China. In the past, they were offered separately. Now we put them together into one burger. As one customer told me, it is a childhood dream come true. This innovative burger sold out in many locations in just two days and drove incremental sales and profits. Since it was so popular, we launched it again for a limited time in June. K-Coffee is available in all KFC stores. Its sales exceed 1 billion RMB in first half of 2024, up 26% year over year. During this period, we sold nearly 120 million cups, up 
36% year over year. We have been accelerating the rollout of our groundbreaking side-by-side tea coffee cafe since late last year. From just 100 stores in March, we tripled the number to nearly 300 in July. Side-by-side K-Coffee cafes feature a distinct dining area and menu. Starting at 9.9 RMB at our campus stores, customers can enjoy our innovative coffee and a hot dog. We also took our popular sparkling Americano to the next level with the introduction of the iced orange creamy sparkling latte, Bing Chen Chen Ke Musu Chi Pao Latte, very long name. The mousse-like smoothness, fizzy burst, and citrus flavor are mind-blowing. Thanks to our superb supply chain and efficient operations, we are making healthy margins too. This is a winning model. By year-end, we expect to roll out our K-Coffee Cafe to 500 to 600 stores. Delivery sales continued their double-digit growth momentum at KFC. We lowered the delivery fee in quarter one to capture the underserved smaller ticket segment. These strategic moves proved successful as we gained market share on aggregator platform. We drove incremental sales and profit without impacting margins by introducing platform riders at select locations. We optimized rider costs while maintaining service quality and customer satisfaction. Now turning to Pizza Hut. This quarter, Pizza Hut achieved its most profitable second quarter since spin-off. On the sales side, we were up against an outsized comb in April from a successful IT marketing campaign last year. In May and June, things of sales improved. Despite sales deleveraging, we improved our profitability by enhancing operational efficiency. For example, we significantly reduced product preparation time by simplifying menu and kitchen operations. We also deployed automated fried rice machines and robotic servers to make our crew's workload lighter. Pizza Hut just hit the 3,500 store mark. We believe Pizza Hut has huge potential. Now, Present in over 750 cities, there are 1,300 cities that have a KFC, but no Pizza Hut as yet. In addition to expanding its footprint, Pizza Hut is also reaching new consumer groups with amazing value, innovative products, and business models. Here are some highlights. First, menu innovation. Our entry price pizzas are addressing previously underserved segments and grew double digit this year. Our new pizza dough burger, Pizza Bao, is attracting many solo diners. This unique burger made with a freshly baked pizza dough bun is receiving raised customer feedback. In quarter two, we sold more burgers than Hawaiian pizza, one of our signatures. Encouraged by its success, we will be rolling the pizza dough burger out to all 3,500 stores later on this month. Second, our Pizza Hut Wild Store model marks a major breakthrough. We successfully attract solo diners, young people, and more value-cautious customers. The model features simpler operations, good food variety, and excellent value for money. It is a fast casual format with lighter service. 
since opening the pilot store just in May, we have converted over 100 existing stores to this model by end of July. Initial results of the WOW model are encouraging. I visited some of our newly opened stores last month. Sales were vibrant with customers queuing outside. Our first batch of new stores achieved significant same-store sales uplift. Given the encouraging results, we are accelerating the store rollout. By year-end, we expect to more than double our WOW store count. Now, let me talk about our store expansion. We are seeing fantastic long-term growth opportunities in China. Our flexible new store formats allow us to penetrate profitably across city tiers and locations. Our new stores maintain good returns. Their payback period held steady at two years for KFC and improved to two to three years at Pizza Hut. Around 80% of our new stores achieved monthly break-even within three months. We focus on white space to minimize the impact on existing stores. KFC's small-time mini model is unlocking new site possibilities in lower-tier cities. We have also identified opportunities in strategic locations like college campuses, gas stations, highway service centers, and other transportation hubs and tourist locations. KFC's new store at Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Jiao Da, for example, is enjoying busy on-campus traffic. We are also leveraging partnerships with franchisees to unlock opportunities in lower tier cities and strategic locations. In the second quarter, net new stores from franchising reached 25%. We expect the ratio will go up, slightly exceeding the 15 to 20% target we set at our investor day last year. Now, let me recap the three key messages I want you to take away today. First, we took actions to drive operational efficiency, which enabled us to invest in value for money and to support our margin. These efforts were not just one-off cost cuts. They were structural improvements that should deliver benefits for years to come. Second, we embraced consumer needs and succeed in driving robust transaction growth. We are confident that our sales initiatives will drive sustainable long-term system sales and same-store sales growth. Third, innovations in new store models will continue to power our long-term growth. Our Q2 results show that our strategies are working. Great companies thrive in tough conditions and turn challenges into opportunities. I'm confident in our ability to navigate the current environment and emerge stronger than ever. Before we move on to our financial results, I would like to take a moment to recognize the tremendous contribution that Andy has made to Young China. Andy has played a critical role in enhancing the company's financial strength, establishing robust cost discipline, and supporting our growth strategy. Under his leadership, the finance team further strengthened its core capabilities and upgraded its system and processes in key areas. He also successfully led the completion of our listing in Hong Kong. I would also like to thank Andy for his commitment to transitioning Adrian Ding into the acting CFO role. Please join me in wishing Andy the very best. I am very pleased that Adrian will step up as acting CFO. Adrian is our current 
Chief Investment Officer and General Manager of Lavazza. Over the past five years, Adrian has led multiple investments and capital market projects to enhance our portfolio and organizational strength. He was instrumental in establishing the Lavazza joint venture and building the Lavazza business in China. With his financial and operational expertise, I'm confident that Adrian will support our growth objectives to create sustainable value for our shareholders. With that, I will turn the call over to Andy. Andy? Thank you, Joey, and hello, everyone. As this will be my last earning call with Young China, I want to express my sincere gratitude to Joey, my colleague and shareholder, uh, and our analysts. Over the past five years, it has been a rewarding experience working closely with such a talented and dedicated leadership team. I'm proud of the accomplishment that we have achieved together, navigating the challenges posed by the pandemic and its aftermath. Young China emerged from the pandemic more resilient and ready to accelerate growth. I'm confident in the company's continued success under the capable leadership of the existing management team. Now, let's turn to our financial results. In the second quarter, we deliver a solid performance and set numerous new records, including revenue of $2.68 billion, offering profit of $266 million, offering margins of 9.9%, and dilute the EPS of 55 cents. That's particularly impressive given the current market conditions. As Joe Yi shared earlier, the initiative that we launched beginning in the fourth quarter of last year to drive sustainable growth and protect margins are beginning to pay off. While tough lapping and current market conditions impacted same store sales, our margins stabilized. Our sales growth was led by healthy traffic. Total transactions 13%, and same store transaction grew 4% year over year in the second quarter. It's a testimony to how well our brands, products, marketing, and promotions resonate well with consumers. We attract new customers and capture more occasions from existing customers. By broadening our price range, and offering delicious food at affordable price points. Despite a lower ticket average, restaurant margin was markedly flattish year over year on a comparable basis. Core offering margin actually improved year over year, setting a new quality record for offering margins thanks to our economy of scale and cost measures. Taking a longer view, our system sales grew 25% compared with the second quarter 2019, outperforming the restaurant industry. Offering profits increased even more by 38% compared to 2019, excluding foreign exchange. Now let's take a closer look at our second quarter performance. By brand, KFC system sales increased 5% year over year. Same store sales were at 97% of prior year levels, with 4% same store traffic growth and 7% lower ticket average. Looking at it from a longer term perspective, our ticket average in the second quarter was 37 RMB, higher than the 35 RMB ticket average in the second quarter of 2019. Our strategy is to widen the price range and capture low ticket average delivery orders are, are paying off. Our entry price combo drove incremental traffic. Delivery sales grew 12%. Pizza Hut system sales increased 1% year over year. Same store sales were at 92% of the prior year level, with traffic growth of 2% and a 9% lower ticket average. Pizza Hut continued to tap into more volume-conscious consumer and solo diner segments with entry-priced pizzas, burgers, and one-person meals. 
The ticket average went down in keeping with our strategy, but probably improved year over year through our team's relentless effort to drive efficiency. Now, let's go through our margin and key cost lines. Our operating margin as a percentage of revenue was 9.9%, the highest second quarter record since our spin-off. Resilient restaurant margin and proactive savings in GNA expenses help us achieve that. Our restaurant margin was 15.5%, 60 basis points lower than last year, or approximately the same on a comparable basis. Saving in cost of labor and occupancy and other costs offset increases in cost of sales. Cost of sales was 31.5%, 80 basis point higher year over year, or 70 basis point higher on a comparable basis. COS was at a healthy level and consistent with our long-term range of 31% plus or minus 1%. We manage our COS tightly despite offering more value for money. Our food innovation capability and superb supply chain allow us to invest in sales driving initiatives and promotions. Cost of labor was 26.3%, 10 basis points lower year over year. Improved operational efficiency more than offset last year's wage increases for our frontline staff and the sales leveraging impact. Occupancy and order was 26.7%, 10 basis point lower year over year, or 50 basis point lower on a comparable basis. This comes from lower marketing and advertising expenses and other cost optimization. Our GNA expenses decreased 11% year over year. We drove operational efficiency gain. We also save on lower performance based compensation this year. GNA expenses as a percentage of revenue was 5% in a quarter, improving from 5.8% a year ago. For the full year, we aim to keep the GNA ratio around 5%. Our effective tax rate was 25.2% in the second quarter, on par with the same period last year. We expect our full year effective tax rate to be in the high 20s. Offering profit was $266 million, a second quarter record, growing 7% year on year. Core offering profit was $275 million, growing 12% year over year. Out of EPS was 55 cents, also a second quarter record, growing 19% year over year. Finally, moving on to our outlook. The market conditions remain challenging. We will continue to invest in value for money and step up product and marketing innovations to drive transaction growth. Our operational efficiency, buy better and spend better projects are not temporary measures. We expect cost savings from project fresh eye and project red eye to continue in the second half. These transformative changes should position us well to remain best in class and best in cost in our business, making our value proposition sustainable and profitable in the long run. Our disruptive new business model like KRC's side-by-side K-Coffee Cafe and Pizza Hut's Bow Store are promising to further same store sales growth potential. As a reminder, we recorded around $15 million in temporary relief and VAT deductions in the third quarter of last year. We do not expect this to re recur this year. We expect rate inflation for our frontline staff to remain at low single digits. We opened a record 779 net new store in the first half and reached 15,423 total number of stores. We are on track to achieve our full year target of 1,500 to 1,700 net new stores. 
We are also on track to return $1.5 billion to shareholders. In the first half, we returned nearly $1 billion, including buying back 21.7 million shares. This is equivalent to over 5% of our outstanding shares. Our strong cash flow generation and healthy cash position continue to power our capital return to shareholders. At the end of the second quarter, we had $3.1 billion in net cash. Our three-year growth target remains unchanged. We are committed to returning at least $3 billion to shareholders while driving long-term and sustainable growth. Now, with that, I will pass it back to Fawn. Fawn. Thanks, Andy. Now, we will open the call for questions. In order to give more people the chance to ask questions, please limit your questions to one at a time. Operator, please start the Q&A. Thank you. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press star 2. If you're on a speakerphone, please pick up the handset to ask your question. Your first question comes from Michelle Cheng with Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, Joy uh, uh, Andy, and congrats for the still very strong and the resilient numbers, and uh, also uh, Andy, uh, all the best. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my question is about this uh, new business format and still a concept, and uh, uh, it's really impressive that we have a very aggressive uh, opening uh, year today, and uh, thank you, Joy, also sharing the target by end of the year, but um, can you uh, please give us more color about the economics and also the contributions like K-Coffee side-by-side stores uh, in same store sales? Uh, uh, for those stores, we already have uh, these uh, 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 openings in the past few months. And uh, uh, given it's still more value position, so shall we, uh, when we think about the economics, uh, uh, sh- shall we see that these uh, food calls um, uh, ratio will be higher, but this will be offset by like more uh, simplified uh, uh, call structures in O&O payroll. And then that from the margin perspective, uh, structurally we will see more upside uh, from this new model. And also, are we going to see more new concepts in addition to the K coffee and wall uh, in the next few quarter? Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, it's, uh, it's truly amazing for our team to uh, have this breakthrough, and we are very excited about it. And I will answer the, your last question first, is we are going to focus on these two breakthrough models uh, out of KFC and Pizza Hut. And I think uh, the initial results are very encouraging, and uh, we'll, we'll focus on that for the rest of the year and, and, and going forward. Uh, come back to the content of the new concept. Uh, first of all, the easiest way is travel to Shenzhen. <laughs> uh, I encourage all our analysts, uh, just cross the border. Uh, I recently just visited the one in Yifan Chen Uni Center, I think. Uh, it's the Pisa Vow. Uh, and then we have a few other cake coffee side by side. Then you can see the menu, the operation, and you have a very good feel about it. Um, so for K-Coffee, uh, it has its own menu. Uh, the, the menu is very simple. Uh, and then in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the product, we have some winning product. The sparkling coffee is a fantastic product. And food is also important. And that comes to the uh, next uh, characteristic of uh, K-Coffee is uh, we share the kitchen and the operation operation with the, with the uh, normal uh, KFC store. So the ki- kitchen is shared, uh, operation team is shared, but it has its own distinct area. Uh, and then uh, for, the, for the customer, the value for money is amazing, and I will highlight uh, one uh, particular offer, which I mentioned in my remark, is the, um, in, the, in the campus store, campus cake of K Coffee store, uh, we actually offer sparkling coffee with a hot dog at 9.9 yen. Now you might naturally ask the question, how does it work for the margin? Well, think about this way. For many years already, we offer our breakfast at 9 yen, 8 yen. We offer the food and the coffee come, comes for free. In K Coffee, it's the reverse. We sell the coffee at 9.9 yen, food is free. 
So it's in our supply chain capability that we can do these a very uh, competitive way. So the net net uh, the margin is healthy. So and then in, in terms of result, uh, it add both incremental same store sales and uh, incremental uh, profit. Now come to the K Val Pizza Hut store. So it's it's sort of a bit more fast casual with a bit less service, just a little bit. Uh, uh, how do I describe this? The food offering is a bit like Pizza Hut but tapas, uh, ha. smaller portion, lower price, but if you go in there by yourself, you can order a bit more for variety, but total ticket average is less than the normal Pizza Hut store. Uh, but the traffic is fantastic, so uh, overall uh, it, it works. And uh, the same store sales uh, increase is uh, is is very encouraging. And and for the Pizza Hut Vow store, we just convert some of our Pizza Hut store into this new concept. Uh, it's conversion basically. So right now uh, we are, we have uh, a 100 store converted by the end of July. And we plan to uh, over, uh, achieve uh, over 200 by the end of the year. And in terms of COS margin, um, it, it's actually better. Uh, although it's early days, uh, but the unit economics is, is better because COS is uh, COL, COL and O and O is a bit less. So that's that's what we can share with you right now. Uh, but the number one suggestion across the border goes to see some incentive. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Joy. Very looking forward to. Your next question comes from Lillian Lowe with Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hello, thanks. Hello, uh, Joey and uh, Andy. Uh, my question is about the uh, recent trend on the theme sales um, and also again congratu congratulations on um, giving such a good result and uh, even under uh, a bit challenging environment. So I want to understand. Uh, getting into so quarter, fourth quarter, when the top com um, kind of uh, alleviated a bit, and with um, all this cost efficiency put in place, how we should look at the operation on a holistic basis, and have we seen a different trend in different tier of markets in terms of the demand and um, and the cost management, uh, like high tier city and low tier cities? Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Um, let me share a little bit of uh, learning from the quarter one trading pattern and then uh, make a few comments about the quarter two. Uh, by region, the eastern part of China is still the most resilient one. By city tier, lower tier city recover faster than higher tier city, uh, both year and year and versus longer term like pre-pandemic uh, 2019. By location, the residential locations are more resilient and shopping centers are almost back to 2019 level. And moving on to the business environment, there's been a lot of attention to the business environment and consumer sentiment in China. Uh, we are not seeing significant change in market condition and consumer sentiment going to quarter two. Uh, with that said, uh, quarter three, sorry. Um, my, uh, with that said, uh, my management team and I share one particular philosophy on that. Uh, yes, business is tough right now, but much like, much like uh, life, right? It's always tough. Uh, in business, as in life, we always expect the unexpected. We don't whine about it. We accept whatever comes our way, and we adapt and do the right thing. Often, in doing so, we are able to turn the disruptions to our competitive advantage by deploying our scale and our capabilities. In terms of how to do it, etc., cetera, um, I have um, uh, covered them in my remarks regarding the specific actions, but the three key points uh, bear repeating in summary. First of all, uh, to answer your question about the cost efficiency, we have tuned every process and cost element to drive operational efficiency, make our store managers workload lighter, and reinvest into our value for money offerings. 
and support our margins. Second, uh, we have innovate creative new products, uh, which uh, have lovely pictures in the PowerPoint deck. And we widened our price points to broaden our addressable market and drive traffic. So we innovate breakthrough store model, uh, such as the K-Coffee Cafe and mini store for small towns for KFC, and the fast casual model called Pizza Hub, which I just described, to power future growth of KFC and Pizza Hut. Like all three strategies are showing strong initial results. Um, as a result, uh, for quarter two this year, we see robust growth, well, actually double-digit growth in transaction and delivery sales. Our restaurant margin stabilized and core OP grew by 12%. Uh, we see the most profitable quarter two since spin-off, uh, despite the industry dynamic. Uh, thank you, Lillian. Thanks a lot, Joey, and the best wishes to Andy. Thanks, Louise. The next question comes from Chen Lu with Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, Joey and Andy. This is Chen. Uh, and congrats again on the strong result and also my best wishes to Andy. I'd like to take a deeper look at the margins. So definitely our Q2 margins beat expectation. Uh, and uh, when you are looking into the details, I noticed that, uh, uh, first of all, the food and paper costs as percentual sales edged down by 60 bips uh, on a Q on Q basis, despite the fact that uh, our promotion seems to be very intense in Q2. Uh, so what is driving that? Is it because of the falling commodity cost or is it because of our smart value or uh, supply chain initiatives? Uh, and secondly, if you look at the cost of labor, uh, it has declined big time on a young year basis for uh, Pizza Hut. Uh, and also for the group, it's largely flattish versus the usual upward trend. Uh, so what is also uh, driving all these changes? Mm. Uh, and lastly, uh, I noticed that our first half retro margin is actually pretty much on par with first half of 2019 which is usually regarded by the market as a normalized comparison base. Is it fair to say that going forward, uh, our margins can be largely comparable for uh, to, to, to 19 for the rest of the year? Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Lao Ting, um, your, for your question. Um, and uh, <clears throat> in terms of short term, I think um, obviously uh, we are never getting some uh, pretty dynamic, pretty uh, complex, you know, operating environment uh, in the short term. And consumer remain very value conscious. And so that's very important thing to keep in mind. So um, from our perspective, if you look at, you know, uh, third quarter last year uh, was not particularly uh, 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 low base. If you think about last year, uh, you know, we did see, you know, the consumer space often um, you know, in late September. So that's something to keep in mind. So in the short term, you know, obviously uh, sales would be an important driver for margins, um, as we have mentioned on the call. But nevertheless, as you, we have mentioned uh, in our prepared remark, we have taken very decisive actions to adjust our cost structure, and so that, uh, and then also we have a, a very decisive action to change uh, some of our business model to embrace the you know, market change. And so as a result, we're able to see stabilized. Uh, UC margins, um, and then and then also we see uh, expansions in our operating margins um, to assume that you know is the best uh, since our spin-off. Now, um, if you look at our initiative, uh, those initiatives are not a short-term measures. They are longer-term structural change in the way how not only the cost structure but also how we operate our business, make it more efficient. Um, in the short term, I think you know like uh, if you think about commodity price in the short term. Uh, some of the commodity prices are more favorable, uh, but at the same time, you know, we again uh, have mentioned over and over again that you know it's important for us to invest in value, uh, invest uh, 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 and embrace the consumer uh, uh, changes. And so, um, and you know, so still as sometimes it fluctuates, uh, as we have mentioned before, uh, we always in the long term targets 31% plus or minus 1%, and you know, sometimes seasonality, some of the fluctuations. 
Um, I think all in all, uh, we're still on, on mark for that. Uh, this quarter is about 31.5%. Um, so uh, in terms of COL, yes, you know, you did see, you know, quite a bit of uh, improvement in, you know, labor productivity, and that will be continue to be, you know, some of our focus. We will continue to uh, look into our operations, uh, simplify some of the uh, procedures, and, 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 and make sure that, uh, you know, what we do <coughs> actually add value. If what we do don't add value, you know, not valuable for the RGM or consumer will take it out. Um, so, uh, but, you know, uh, when we look at in the second half this year, for example, the full year this year, we do expect COL inflation uh, at the soften level uh, to be at low single digit. Um, and then in terms of O&O, I think it is, uh, continue to be, you know, an uh, area that we had initiative to try to improve that, but obviously um, it is uh, composed of many, many things, right? Uh, capital allocations for store investment, uh, that impact depreciation, um, and then also rent, rent is a big thing that we we'll continue to work on, uh, marketing uh, leverage uh, from our digital program. And so we will have many initiatives to try to in improve it incrementally. And so, um, so, so, but one thing I want to remind you folks, uh, as we have reminded folks in, you know, the sec uh, first quarter earning call, which is last year, uh, our company did enjoy, you know, some, you know, one times, right? Like uh, uh, rental relief uh, and also VAT deduction, which is, was a big, you know, uh, government support strategy, uh, policy that uh, that we don't didn't experience uh, in the first half this year, and we don't expect, you know, in the second half this year. So that uh, item that com that impact comparably, um, you know, for the second quarter uh, was uh, last year was about uh, 12 million US dollar, uh, and then in the third quarter it's about 15 million US dollar. And so that, that's that's keeping. I think that's one factor that uh, when you guys look at the model uh, should uh, keep in mind. And so uh, in terms of GNA, uh, I think you know um, as we have mentioned before, we will aim to. Uh, keep GNA a uh, this year uh, around 5% uh, of our total sales uh, revenues. And that is a significant improvement compared to last year. And it is an improvement even compared to uh, 2019. And so, uh, so again, you know, like uh, in, the, in, in the short term, those are how we look at it. But in the longer term, I think we aim for more stable, relatively stable margins and look for a way to uh, improve our operating margins in the long run, uh, if possible. Uh, and then we, I think, you know, we have demonstrated and I think we're confident that uh, we can manage both growth and profitability uh, in good time and bad time. Um, and do we face challenge in the short term? Sure. Uh, but we have demonstrated, I think, you know, and you can see the action that we are taking uh, to embrace, you know, the market changes, uh, to adjust our cost structure, uh, improve our operation efficiencies, and also our change our business model. So that, you know, I think that ability to make these decisive changes to embrace change uh, should help us to sustain margin in the long term. Thank you. I'll just give two concrete examples for you, uh, Lord Sun. For example, uh, COS, right? Uh, we, in select category right now, we go straight to the farmer and producer. Uh, we get really good uh, ingredient at better price. You can totally imagine. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to do that. In the COL, what are the specific things that you can see in our kitchen? 80% um, of our Pizza Hut store right now have automatic fried rice machine. It's pretty cool. You might consider to have one in your house. It's actually very small. <laughs> so it really uh, solves the, uh, the labor uh, shortage or labor, labor problem, particularly during the peak, peak time. And then 50% of our Pizza Hut store right now have robotic server. Not all the store can do it because store too small cannot benefit from it. Uh, so, so, so this definitely a structural, structural change to the COL. And then we have, uh, as I mentioned in my prepared remark, um, we have fewer SKU at selected day parts. What does that mean? It, must, it means that we take out some tail for selected day part. Not, not throughout the whole day, but just throughout certain time of the day uh, so that it has less wastage. Spend better, right? Less wastage, therefore less COS, less COL. That all makes sense. And these are the specific examples. Thank you, Lawton.
Thanks a lot, uh, Joey and Andy, and also look forward to that automatic uh, uh, rice fry machine if it is available on shelf. And also, <laughs> that's my best wishes to Andy again. Thanks, Moshi. Your next question comes from Anne Ling with Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Um, hi, thank you very much for um, taking my question. Um, so I have a small one. Um, it's just on like, you know, um, the new format again. Um, so um, moving forward, you know, for example, for um, uh, Pizza Hut Wow, does it mean that um, uh, in the future on the store opening um, that because currently, you know, you're mainly like, you know, doing a conversion on the store. So um, uh, moving forward, you know, for your new opening, would that also means that, you know, some of the new um, uh, opening will also be strict on like you know, um, uh, uh, pizza as well. And based on your current um, store network, um, how many of them you think that currently you know you can be uh, you can make this kind of shift, um, and uh, and and how quickly you can do that, um, uh, or or like you know at what point you will, will, will you will make a decision in terms of like you know um, accelerating like you know um, this rollout. And then for um, the um, uh, the K Coffee um, store, you know um, the same question is like you know um, uh, under your current like store network, how many store uh, how many store are actually visible uh, for this kind of like you know um, uh, adjacent store format? Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, and um, for Pizza Hut Wow model, um, it's one of the model. Uh, for both KFC and Pizza Hut, we actually have multiple store model for multiple. Uh, locations and formats right. and city tier, et cetera, et cetera. Um, currently, for Pizza Hava, we are testing uh, this model in different parts of the country, uh, and also top tier city, low tier city, uh, you can imagine. Uh, so we will be a bit more clear later on in the year about uh, how many of the existing store that have the potential to be converted. And you can imagine some of the new store, if suitable for this model, uh, we will open uh, Pizza Havao as a new store as well. Uh, similar story for K-Coffee, but not so similar. K-Coffee is not so much a conversion. K-Coffee Cafe is a bit like identify existing store and we kind of have a side-by-side add-on sort of a, a distinct store to the existing uh, uh, KFC store. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we are testing it in different parts of China right now, and the most remote part is in Shikase, right? Sizhang, Tibet. Uh, and, you know, in tourist location, uh, and then Hanzhou Dongzhang, the Hanzhou High Speed Railway Station, uh, you can imagine. So different location, different city tier, uh, we are testing it. And then we are building our uh, food and also the, the drink of the cake coffee as well. Uh, so, you know, we have the, a bit more uh, aggressive number of cake coffee, which is uh, by the end of the year, 500, 600, uh, 600, 500 to 600 store. Uh, but this is what we have in our mind and we'll continue to learn and then we adjust and adapt, and we accelerate the, the 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 speed if we if we need to, um, and 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 we'll continue to learn. Uh, thank you, Anne. Thank you, and uh, Andy, the best. Thanks, Anne. The next question comes from Brian Fitner with Oppenheimer and Co. Please go ahead. <clears throat> thank you, um, Andy. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thanks for all the help over the years and I wish you the best. Um, I was hoping you guys could put some guardrails on how to think about the second half of the year for same store sales. Uh, of course, if we look at last year, the comparison gets a lot easier in the third and fourth quarter, but given the operating environment, I'm not sure how relevant comparisons are. So is there in fact an opportunity for same store sales to show some improvement in the second half, first to first half, or is the message from you that we we analysts should remain pretty conservative and maybe expect more of a similar second half as what we saw in the first half? 
Hi, Brian. Uh, thank you so much for your kind work, and then uh, also thank you for your question. Um, I think, you know, in terms of macro, I think that there's a lot of uh, news on the macro side. I think, is, you know, there are some of the uh, complexities and, and, and potentially challenges uh, in the Chinese uh, consumer space or economy is well discussed. Uh, what we try to, as we were trying to uh, 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 mention on this call, is that, um, you know, as a company, uh, you know, we continue uh, to be able to take decisive actions um, to one to drive sales and the other one is to control costs. Uh, those are two, you know, are actually um, hand in hand, right? So uh, something, some of this initiative, uh, we would be able to take, you know, more control and then you result quickly. And so as a result, you can see, you know, our cost structure has improved uh, quite significantly. Um, and, um, and I think the strategy is working. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we also uh, pass along the savings uh, to consumer, uh, especially, you know, in the market where consumer are more value conscious. And so we'll continue to do that, uh, you know, channel some of the savings uh, to invest in value campaign, you know, some promotional activities uh, to drive traffic. And I think, you know, we also have some results that uh, we're pretty uh, encouraging. Uh, if you look at our traffic growth, uh, we achieve uh, same sort of traffic growth uh, of uh, low single digit this, this quarter. Uh, and then if you look at our overall traffic growth for our franchise, uh, overall, like, you know, the, 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 the brand, uh, we are seeing, you know, uh, double digit growth in our store traffic. And, and that is very important for our restaurant industry because traffic growth is what sustains long term growth and profitability uh, for our business. And so, um, so in terms of the macro outlook, I think as Joey mentioned earlier, uh, we don't see significant change, uh, you know, going into the third quarter. Uh, and we remind folks that, you know, um, last year of the quarter was not particularly easy, as you put it, uh, and because, you know, we only begin to see some uh, 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 softening uh, in the consumer space in late September last year. And so, so you can, you know, if you go back to you know, last year, the, the trend and what we have come in at that time. And so, um, but good news is, you know, it, uh, we have a lot of initiative uh, and to, to try that, we have some breakthrough in our business model uh, with uh, Pizza Hut uh, bound model, uh, with KFC's, um, you know, uh, K Coffee side by side model, and obviously we also have a lot of you know initiative on uh, food innovation. Uh, you know, as a restaurant industry uh, leading player, um, we are very proud of our innovative capabilities, and that is very important to drive consumer to the store. And so we'll continue to do that, but I will cautious people. Uh, you know, uh, you know, be overly optimistic in the second half. Uh, uh, we're not pessimistic, but we shouldn't be, you know, overly optimistic. Uh. Thank you, Brian. Maybe I just add a few comments here. I mean, obviously, nobody has the crystal ball here. Um, and I just want to emphasize that Yum China is a growing company in a growing market called China. Um, you know, it's the, it seems quite fashionable these days to be bearish on China. Uh, but I just want to add that even at its current growth rate, China still accounts for almost one third of the world's annual growth. And particularly the shift to uh, the shift of growth to lower tier city uh, kind of uh, <laughs> reminds me of the push into the frontier in the US and part of yesterday's Wild West become today's Silicon Valley. And something like that has already happened in Shenzhen. So I'm confident that it will happen elsewhere in China as well. Therefore, system sales is equally important uh, compared to systems, uh, single sales. And we, we will try to uh, 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 focus on both system sales and single sales uh, to have the balanced approach. And you will appreciate that we are also uh, pre uh, opening a lot of new stores. Um, and that will have certain sales transfer um, in terms of same store sales. Uh, however, even with that, we are taking a balanced approach as well uh, because 30% of our new stores uh, actually are more on the strategic location or a small tier city uh, where the sales transfer uh, can be managed better. Uh, and, and more than half of our new stores are in uh, lower tier city these days. And last but not least, uh, the K-Coffee Pizza Vow actually 
uh, are very focused on uh, growing the stem cell cells. Uh, so we try to we try to focus uh, and 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 have a balanced approach. Uh, last but not least, you know, uh, it's um, it's not recorded in media, but uh, last year alone, China actually opened 400 shopping malls. In mostly in tier two and below. Think about how many countries in the world these days open 400 shopping malls. And for this year alone, 2024, uh, we are uh, expecting another 300 shopping malls uh, to be open in China. So mm -hmm. when when new shopping mall open like that, we shall open new stores, um, uh, even though it might imply. Uh, sell transfer from the traditional high street to the new shopping mall, uh, because that's how economy evolves and low tier city develop. Uh, so just try to put some uh, content, uh, some some content into the background um, uh, macro mm -hmm. here. Thank mm -hmm. you, Brian. Thank you. and and I do appreciate the system sales side of the equation, but that the unit growth is what's known. And, and the same store sales is kind of what's unknown, and that was the essence of my That's question. True. But thank you. That's true. Thank you, Brian. The next question comes from Sai Jai Lin with CICC. Please go ahead. Thank you, Joe and Andy. Congrats for the high operational efficiency and strong bottom line, and best wishes to Andy. Uh, so um, I want to better understand our pricing strategy in the coming quarters, uh, especially KFC, because uh, for Pizza Hut, we want to introduce entry-level pizza and lower the ticket average, but for Pizza Hut, the TA is uh, relatively stable over a longer period, uh, although we are expanding price range. Uh, so recently, we observed that some other restaurant companies may hope to keep a relatively stable TA this year. Uh, after a TA cut last year. So how about our pricing strategy, especially for KFC, uh, where we keep it relatively stable, or uh, we may further increase promotion because elasticity of demand is still high and to pass savings to the consumer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sujie. Uh, so the question is about the TA, basically. And I presume the TA's uh, hidden question is about the margin. <laughs> uh, so. The TA trend for both KFC and Pizza Hut is consistent with our strategy to drive traffic. Driving tra traffic is the most important thing in our business, and we see robust same-store uh, same transaction growth at both KFC and Pizza Hut. Uh, and we see 13% total transaction growth for, for the business. And that represents the health of our business, by the way. Point two is even with the lower TA, Q2 stabilized restaurant margin and improved operate, uh, operating margin um, because we take proactive steps to improve the operational efficiency as well. So for KFC in the long term, we will take a balanced approach uh, to maintain a steady TA. Um, TA fluctuate quarter by quarter. Uh, and particularly, you know, compared to pandemic. However, if we take a long-term view, Q quarter two TA actually is IMB 37, and it's still higher than the quarter two TA uh, of 2019, that's pre-pandemic, and that's 35. So in the long term, uh, KFC, we have a very balanced approach. But in the short term, we will have sharp focus value, uh, widen the price price range because that worked well and that drove traffic, as we can see. However, with that said, we also will continue to offer higher ticket items uh, with strong value for money such as whole chicken, family bucket, because they continue to do well and they balance out the TA as well. For Pizza Hut, TA come down by design since 2017. Um, every year we want to take the TA down a bit. Uh, for quarter two, it's probably a bit more uh, than we expected, but it's okay. And let me add the Pizza Hut, actually, uh, April, the same store sales TA suffer because uh, of outside the uh, uh, promotion campaign last year, uh, April. 
And by May and June, actually, it recovered. Uh, the particular stem cell cells uh, recovered pretty close to KFC. Um, but Pizza Hut will continue to tap into more value cautious consumer and solo diner segments with entry price pizzas, burgers, and one person meal, etc. And then, of course, the Pizza Hut vow. By the way, for the entry price pizza, which is below uh, 50 RMB, which we talked about it in the last earning release, uh, this particular price point pizza is growing a double digit for us. It's very nice because it's expanding our market share in this particular segment. Thank you, Sujie. Thank you, Joey. That's very clear. The last question comes from Zia Oto with Zia Oto We with Citigroup. Please go ahead. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. I, Thank you for taking my got, questions. This is Shao Poe of City Group. Yeah. Um, a lot of things have been discussed in the prepared remarks and the prior q and A. I I just want to uh, understand that it's still given this environment. A lot of things have been done by Joe and the team um, on the efficiency improvement. Um, have you have you thought about any disposal of a small business in this environment? Because the small business in the past. Uh, was uh, was intended for expansion of the business, but giving all the environment, environment and the focus on efficiency, the small business may be a distraction of the resources. Um, I just want to seek uh, Joey's thinking on this perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Xiaopo. I mean, your your thinking is is uh, is completely along the line of our thinking. We constantly review our portfolio of the smaller business. Um, and then if I, if I would like to make a few comments here is, uh, for example, the new retail, I mean, some package, uh, package food, uh, that smaller business uh, served us well during the pandemic uh, when we could not open any stores in certain markets. However, now uh, business are sort of more back to normal and we can see the historical mission of the packaged food uh, is probably accomplished. So we are going to probably, uh, uh, you know, uh, reduce our involvement in it bit by bit um, very soon. Uh, so that's one example. And then for other smaller business, we always have a very disciplined approach, which Andy has shared in previous uh, uh, interactions with our shareholder and, and analysts is we only invest a very small percentage of our uh, uh, profit on the small business. Uh, while it gives us the opportunity, the smaller business gives us opportunity to learn, uh, to train our staff, and to fail. Um, it's not set up to fail, but you know, smaller business is very challenging. Um, so, so we'll continue to revi uh, review our portfolio. Uh, Lavasa actually is making really good progress. Uh, we have more, uh, significantly more break-even stores this year than last year. We are happy about it. The retail bean business of Lavasa uh, is actually turning profitable in quarter two, 2024, and we expect meaningful sales growth this year. And for Lavazza, we actually are moving coffee bean production from Italy to China so that we have fresher bean, more nimble innovation, lower cost, etc. So Lavazza will continue, and it, 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 it takes time to build a good business, but it's really building step by step. And then the Huang Qi Huang and, Lava, uh, and Little Xi Huang Qi Huang is a very resilient business. Uh, we are adding 15 new stores in the first half, bringing our total to over 800 stores globally. And a uh, little ship we have this new model called Zhuan Zhuan Guo is to convert part of the store, uh, sometimes the new store, to serve one person and has achieved initial success. And we are building uh, more stores this year. Um, and then Taco Bell, uh, is uh, having a bit of a harder time because it is indeed a, a bit more uh, sort of foreign concept to Chinese consumer. Um, so we need a bit more time and we are starting out the portfolio. Uh, 
to 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 further improve the business model. And that's where we are. But Xiaopo, we are constantly reviewing uh, the health uh, of the of the smaller business. Thank you so much. Yeah, Xiaopo, uh, I will add a little bit more there. Uh, as any capital deployment in our company, we're very disciplined about it. Uh, be it store, you know, model, or be it, you know, the brand. Uh, I think we have demonstrated uh, in the past, and we will continue to do that. Which is, you know, uh, when we see something that, you know, have potential, we'll continue to invest in that. And we don't have a discipline. Uh, we don't have a requirement to say, well, you immediately need to be profitable for a smaller brand. Uh, for example, building a coffee brand in China would take time, right? But we see quick progress, and you know, we'll continue to invest in that. Uh, we also in soccer, we have closed some brand like CMJ, right? Like when you think we need to consolidate, you know, our resources to focusing, you know, on the coffee business on Mabasa and now K Coffee at the lower end, uh, functional end of the coffee business. And so, so yeah, so like you know, capital deployment, including for the brand, for the store, um, the overall portfolio, we we'll continue to remain, you know, very disciplined about it to make sure that you know capital are deployed efficiently for our shareholder. Thank you, Shabo. Thanks, Great, thanks, Joey. Great, thanks. And Andy, all, all the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for joining the call today. For further questions, please reach out through um, the contact information in our earnings release and on our website. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys.